Yo, yo, what's going on, YouTubers, Gospel YouTubers, it's your boy Ray J, coming at you with another Basement Boy production from the, you already know what floor I'm on, about to do a bass lesson, got a few requests on things that beginners can learn to really get the most out of their playing, developing good practice habits, and the like, so I'm going to give y'all a couple of exercises to do every time you practice as warm-ups to really get the most out of your playing, get the most out of your, your bass fretting system, which is being able to play anywhere on the neck. So we're just going to go into that. All right, let's go to the throne of grace. A high in the name of Yeshua, forgive us for all our worst sins, continue to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another day in the land of the living. Thank you for life, health, and strength and the ability of our limbs. And as we go into this lesson, we ask you to increase our skills, and talents, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for the base, Heavenly Father. Help me to teach with understanding and clarity and help the viewers to learn with understanding and clarity, Father. For I water, they plant, they plant, I water, but you give the increase, Father. And we will always give your name all the glory, honor, all praise for us in your son, your shy's name we pray. Amen. So, beginner lesson. What to do to take your base playing to the next level or to develop good practice, good study habits. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little quick system that you should do every time you pick up the bass, which should be every day. Even if you only have 20 minutes, this exercise, if you do it straight through, it shouldn't take no more than 10, 15 minutes if you do it as I say do it. So the first thing you wanna do before you do anything is anoint your hands because that is really what it's all about. Whether if you play, well, I want to say anoint your hands if you're going to play music that says I hate God or I don't believe in God. Of course not. But most of my students or most of my viewers are, are gospel bass players. So, you know, without God, we can't do anything. The God of the Hebrews of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who I pray to. I just say the ancient Hebrew name, which is Ahia for God and Christ. It's just shy. That's what I say. So you want to start off by anointing your hands and praying. And what you need to get, and this is this lesson is for only serious and dedicated bass players, no matter if you're a beginner or intermediate. You want to get a pair of Grip Master. I got the heavy tension. It's only about ten dollars on Amazon. And what this would do, you do it like this, then you Push your hands down, I mean your fingers, like that. And that's how you build finger strength. So when you get on the fretboard, all this resistance would translate to easiness over here because your strings are not as hard to push down as this heavy tension is. Like that, and then you switch. And you could do each set. You could do eight sets. So one, two, three, four. That's one, one, two, three, four, so forth, so on. So eight sets if you could get this. If not, you could pick up this. And again, this is real cheap too. And this strengthens your forearm. Because if you like me and you playing, you ever if you never caught that cramp in your hand, oh my gosh, you bless them from not getting it. But the more you start to play and play long, when this joint just start to cramp up. It's like your hand go dead. Like, I can't move my hand. I ain't sweet. I just can't move it. So you want to get that. But if you can't get that, what I also recommend, even if you do this, you want to loosen up your fingers because you never want to be tense while playing a bass or anything that you do that's skillful or, or athletic. Or no matter what you're doing, period. You always want to be loose before you do it. So what I usually do, like before I play on a gig, if my hand, I can't, I hate cold hands, so... I always run my hands, run my run water, hot water on my hands, and why while, while the water's on the hands, I just do like this, like loosen my hands up, like that, because you want to have loose hands. You never want to be stiff. Just think about it, running or playing football, or basketball, and not stretching, compared to stretching then doing it, you feel a lot looser. Okay, so we did all that. That pre warmer, that's the pre warm up. All right. And the next thing you need to have, everybody has a smartphone these days or an app store, whether if it's the Android or iPhone, you have an app. 
you want to download a metronome. I have Android, so I have the app is called Mobile Metronome. It's free. And on Android, I mean on Apple, it's free too. You want to download a metronome because you want to get into practice a habit, and I'm getting more of a habit of practicing with a metronome because it will really sonically lock you in to the music so that you coming on the hit notes when you're supposed to versus when you think you thought it was. So practice with with a metronome because this is what this lesson is going to be about. So first, or overall, we're going to use three total scales for this practice routine. First scale we're going to do is a chromatic scale. The second one is going to be the major scale. And the third one is going to be a minor scale. So each night you practice, you want to hit each of these three scales. How long is up to you. I recommend going up and down like I'm about to show, but you adjust accordingly to your time. You do less or more is up to you. But the chromatic, the major, and the minor. So the, all the chromatic scale is every note. So whenever you hear of a chromatic scale or a chromatic walk down, it's just all half steps in front of each other. And, I'm gonna, and for this one, what you want to do, I usually start backwards, up, then go backwards, down, then go forwards, down, then forwards, up, and back down. But I'll start forwards going down for y'all. So what you want to do is you got four strings. I won't use the B string. You got E, A, D, G, B. We're going to put our metronome. I just dropped my phone. And I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Put my metronome on night on 80 BPM. The time signature is 4-4. Four, four, all right? And what we're going to do is just go down the chromatic scale. We're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. And when we get right here, we're going to go back up. So... Right, and up and down equals one. So we're gonna do three sets of that. Let's just say start now. You can add to it, and you can and you can subtract. So let's just say three sets of up and down. So one, two, three. All right, and when you get to your third one, and to keep in timing with this, we're going to switch it to going backwards down. So we was going forwards down, which is up the neck, well, down the neck. All right, I call that forward because this is going forward, not backwards. But working towards down is going backward. So from... First finger to fourth finger, that's what we're going to do up and down four times. And from fourth finger or pinky finger to index finger, going backwards. Up and down four times. All right? So once you do that four times, you're going to go to your next position of the chromatic scale. So this is working between the first and fourth frets. Our second position is going to be working between, what is this, the six, six, seven, eight, nine, the six and the ninth frets. Okay, and you can start right here. The sixth fret on the E string, if in standard tuning is B flat. And you're going to do the same thing. Up and down four times, going forwards and backwards. Four times. Then our last position is going to be between the 12th and the 15th fret. Between that E on the E string and that G on the E string. All the way to the G on the G string, which is... Same note to the B flat. All right.
up and down four times, going forwards, and up and down, going backwards. All right. So, <clears throat> so we got we got those three versions of the chromatic scale going up and down four times, and that's with plucking every string. So the next time, once you do this four times, you're gonna go back up here, but we're just doing plucking each string one time, and the other three notes is gonna be hit notes. I mean, hammer ons when you go down, going forwards, going down. Okay, so let me take you through what I was talking about first. Three, four. So this is 80 BPM, okay? Listen how the one sound. But I'm not going to do it four times. I'm going to just show you what I'm talking about. Here we go. See, I never missed one. Alright, so, and that's, that's the first version of the chromatic scale that we're going to do, on, which is plucking every note. So you see how I, when I went from the first to the fourth fret to the sixth to eighth, I still was on the one. Alright, and when I went from the twelve to fifteen, I was still on the one. So that's what we want to practice. And when you get down here, and you go back up, you're going to hit this last note twice. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh. All right. So now the second version of the chromatic scale run through is the same. We're we're using the the same frets, one through four, six through nine, and twelve to fifteen. But this time, like I said, we're doing hammer ons. So you're gonna you're gonna pluck the first note. Well, not pluck. You're gonna ring the first note. Then two, three, four is all hammer on. So one, and watch my fingers well. All right, and that's still up and down four times going forwards. Now going backwards. You can't do a backwards hammer on. So the backward version of a hammer on is a pull off. So you just pulling off. You're going to do the string the first note, ring the first note, and pull off the next three. Right, and it's the same thing down here. Same thing, um, but I'm gonna do it because I wasn't showing off. I'm gonna do it with the metronome. 
Again, 80 BPM. One, two, three, four. Watch. Going back up. And hammer on strong, build up strength. My bad. Who was that messing up my lesson? All right. So that's the first for the chromatic. Wow, this is already 16 minutes. I swear it will only take eight. <laughs> My bad. So now, so, and that's going to be the same thing that we're going to be doing when I say do the same thing but hammer on and pull off, that same approach. All right, so we got knock the chromatic scale out. And even though the lesson is already 16 minutes, it won't take you this long to do it for each one 16 minutes. It's just me explaining it and really giving a thorough breakdown. You know what I mean? So now... That's the chromatic scale. And by doing that and hammer on pull off, you're building up your hand strength. And at also, at the same time, learning different articulation notes. So you don't have to strum every one. That wasn't, that was a slide. to pull off well or slide that's a pull off same thing basically so now the second one is the major scale and what we're going to do the major scale the chromatic scale was 4-4 but the major scale we're going to use 3-4 so you see I'm giving you different time signatures to, to train your ear so we're going to switch the time signature still 80 BPM but is three notes per, me per measure and a subdivision is a quarter note and we're working with the major scale and we're just going to use three strings the E, A, and D string but as you get if you want to you can use the the uh, A, D, and G string but I'm going to just use the E, A, and D alright and we're going to go through the major scale by numbers You could, we can start out on, on F sharp and we're going to work our way all the way up alright so, and with F sharp, that's F sharp right there, but we're going to start on the 7th, which is F. And we're going to do, since it's 3 fourths measure, each string has three notes of every major scale. So we're going to do 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Those are not the numbers. The numbers are 1, oh, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, octave. Then you do it again. Remember, you, the last note that you hit on, you're going to start on going back down. So once we go all the way down, we're coming back up too. So 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 7, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 7. And we're going to do the, that just like how we did that, the chromatic scale. But with this one, when you go to the 7, I want you to do two times of each. So up and down two times. And on the second time that you get up, that next note, I want you to take it up an octave well take it up a note a half step okay not an octave take it up a key so you're starting on F for your first one because you're an F sharp you're starting on the seventh you take it up a half step you're starting on F sharp which means you're now in G so it'd be like this just say I'm going up so forth and so on but I'm gonna demonstrate that and I want you to go all the way up 
to the octave of F sharp, which is this. So you're gonna do every one till you get up here. All right. And when you do that, I want you to, go to I want you to go back down as well. So. that's too confusing don't worry about it but basically since we know we're starting on the seven that means your ring your middle finger is always your hit note so we start on the seven we work our way down to the E we know we in F because the E is the seventh of F and you do that too and then you just like we did with the chromatic the first style we did was strumming every note the second one is you strum one note per string and that's always the first note so watch all right and I'm gonna practice I'm gonna show you let's give you the fly version and all these, let, by doing this consistently and on time, is developing your time, but it's, it's all about getting finger strength. Because if you expect to be fast, you got to have finger strength for accuracy. And that's another thing I want to say. It's not about just being or trying to train to be fast, but you want to be fast and accurate. Or first, you want to learn to be accurate, then fast. Because if you fast, just think about it. A fast football player, he's the fastest receiver. Always the fastest receivers in the NFL is never the best one because they can't catch. So you don't want to be that receiver. He can get down the field in two seconds, but he can't catch to save his life. Or he can dribble down a court real fast, but he don't have no handling. He's quick, but with no handling. You want to be accurate, even if you're not as fast as some other base players. As long as your notes are accurate, and your stuff is melodic, that's all that really matters. We just get overwhelmed by speed because we live in a fast society where we praise people who's fast, but never really praise the people who's not as fast, but they're more accurate. It's about accuracy. Accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. All right, so be accurate. All right. Let's start at two, three, one. Two, I'm gonna just walk it down. One, two, three. I'm in F sharp. Change keys. Next time, I'm going to do hammer-ons and pull-offs. Watch my fingers. Alright, so now you do that going up and down the fretboard, okay? And again, you do each one, what I say, each one four, just say everything fours. Chromatic up and down four, major scale up and down four, minor scale up and down four. Now, for minor, we're going back to four four because it's from root to octave, counting root and octave is eight notes. But the major scale... Counting root to octave, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The way I did is is nine notes.
because we hit the octave 7 and 1 twice. 7 plus 2 is 9. So we're going to go back to 4-4 four, four for the, the natural minor scale. All right, we can start on, on F for that. So if we're doing an F, natural minor scale is equivalent, same exact notes as the A flat major scale. Because if you just, whatever, if you say I'm, I'm in F minor, treat the F as the 6 and find the 1, which is A flat, and that's the same exact notes. So if you ever hear somebody say the song is in E flat minor, if you want to make that the relative major scale, you just find a one. It's just a, a half step and a whole step up. So a half step from E flat is E. A whole step from E is F sharp. So the F sharp major scale is equivalent to the E flat minor scale. You say it's a whole step and a half step or a half step and a whole step. Get you same steps, all right? So we're going to do the F minor scale. And a progression would be, I mean, now let me give you the notes in F. It's one. Two minor third, four five minor six, minor seven, and the root. So total notes is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From root to octaves, eight notes. Just say seven different notes. All right. So the fingering system would be. One three four one three four one three then three one four three one four three one all right and it's four fours and the same thing as we did with the major scale we're gonna do it here four up four down striking each note then you're gonna do four up four down hammer on and pulls off pull off turn me down may I turn myself down all right so remember four up four down I'm gonna just do the accelerate version here we go Next one, hammer on. Pull off. Skip some one. I'm in B minor. Or D. the three scales that you should do every night in 28 minutes but now that you know it's just four up four down going all the way yeah going all the way up the scale four up four down for the chromatic you don't got to do four up four down if you now if you want to get the extra work in <laughs> after practice we throw them with the quarterback catch them with the quarterback you know what I'm saying you could do four up four down but for the major for the major scale you go just move to the next next key like I said from the seventh drop that hand a half step up that becomes your new seven and you go like that all the way to the octave all right same thing with the minor so if you thought at any point in time I lost you or I diverted took a tangent or anything is un not understand 
that's a word. If anything's unclear, you got some questions on anything, leave a comment, hit me up, y'all know I respond. So once again, as always, appreciate everybody who's been commenting and subscribing. Really appreciate the love and feedback. And we're going to get this thing. So again, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank you, and I appreciate y'all. It's your boy Ray, over and out.